Hello fellow plot questers, today I got Canterbury Tales and since there's like a gazillion stories in there I'm just gonna talk about three and how they're related and the, that will be the first three which is the Knight's Tale, the Miller's Tale and the Reeves Tale. So the Knight's Tale is basically about two guys dueling over a girl and them being so overly chivalrous and honorable that that they literally just kinda you know, hey you're you're kinda nerfed right now so you can rest before we fight and stuff like that. Just fighting over a girl except really honorably. And it's chivalry and noble, I guess, and the crowd reaction is, like, it's a good tale, and it should be remembered as a very noble tale. And that's the crowd reaction. Uh, the Miller's Tale is a comedic tale of a dude tricking this old fat carpenter, so, because this old car old fat carpenter has an 18-year-old, very sexy wife, and the, the main character wants to bang the wife, so he, with a clever little trick, he... He bangs his wife and well, bangs the carpenter's wife and makes a fool out of the carpenter. The Reeves tale is about a miller because the Reeves used to be a carpenter and felt insulted by the miller's tale. Uh, the miller's tale, the Reeves tale, is about a a miller or a miller who is stealing things, who is stealing a corn from from other people, and because of that, uh, because of that he gets punished by two college students who who came for revenge. And got tricked by the miller. However, the two decided then to just bang his wife and his daughter. Um, yeah, uh, to punish to punish the bad guy Miller, and they bang the wife and the daughter. And the wife and the daughter in, enjoyed it, even though they got raped in their sleep. I don't know. And then they take the corn and then they run away. And those are the three stories. And the reason why this story is genius is when it provides the context for what the Canterbury Tales truly is. Which is a collection of stories that there's a bunch of pilgrims going to Canterbury and they're talking about, they're trying to spend some time talking about, um, talking about their own stories because um, the, the innkeeper or the owner said that uh, he's going to provide a free meal for the one who wins the uh, story making contest. And the Knight's Tale and the Miller's Tale is absolutely contrasting opulence. The Knight's Tale is more of a proper tale, like, let's say, difference between Shakespeare and slapstick comedy. Shakespeare is good and intellectual, sure, and it, and the crowd reaction, especially the people, the rich people and the well-educated people, their reaction is good. They're like, okay, cool. It's a very noble tale and it's remembered for ages. And yeah, it's good. However, the Miller's Tale is more comedic, and it's more open to everyone, and everyone understands it, and everyone laughs at it, and it's quite fun. Uh, and the Miller's Tale is a direct contrast to the Knight's Tale, because the Knight's Tale is basically about two guys honorably fighting each other on an open battlefield to kill each other for a girl they like, and they, they're constantly like being super honorable and chivalrous, and it almost feels super unrealistic and like a fairy tale. Meanwhile, the Miller's Tale, as a sharp contrast, is about a guy who steals someone's wife, and with this neat, neat little trick of, of, of kind of like driving people crazy, kind of thing. Well, it's a complicated little thing, but basically, he the dude's an astronomer. He tricks the old, old stupid carpenter into thinking that there's gonna be a flood, like Noah's flood, and they go up on top of a barn with a bunch of tubs. And due to a couple of unfortunate incidents, the the dude, our friend, the the carpenter, the old carpenter, kind of kind of breaks his arm, and he thinks that the water is coming up and stuff, and he's panicking, and people think it's crazy now. Meanwhile, the main character got to bang his eighteen-year-old sexy wife. Yup, and it is indeed the direct opposite, because in the Knight's Tale. Um, in the Knight's Tale, the two's like honorably fighting over, in the Miller's Tale, it's quite a underhanded method of taking someone else's wife, I don't know, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. As for the Reeves Tale, it is a critique of the Miller's Tale by saying like, okay, Miller, you just insulted a carpenter, and carpenters are cool people, and I was a carpenter, I used to be a carpenter, so I'm gonna attack you, the Miller. And he, his version of the story is like a combination of the worst parts of the Knight's Tale and the Miller's Tale. It has some sort of moral and moral and honor within it because, you know, the bad guys got badded. You know, the bad guys got what kind of what they deserved because the bad guy's wife and kid got 
raped? I don't know, man. I, I don't really get that part. And then... And then the... The, uh, and then the killer... Yeah. And yeah, it's, it just, it just makes, it just makes sense. And it's, it's, it's like a combination of the worst parts. And the Miller's Tale, of course, of the kind of like the, like the banging and the lewd kind of, kind of thing, which is interesting. And what's ironic is that even though these stories aren't necessarily good stories on by on on their own, the fact that they're put into this order and the stories are kind of made bad almost on purpose when you analyze it a bit makes you realize that the author is an absolute genius. For example, the Reeves tale is kind of hypocritical because the thing is, well, it almost feels like that the Reeve is trying to improvise this bad story in order to insult the Miller, but he's kind of failing. Because he's trying to say, okay, the Miller, the, this big bad Miller want needed to be punished. He needs to be punished. So these two college kids go there and they try to take back, take back the stuff that the Miller stole. They completely fail. And then they bang the Miller's wife and daughter in the middle of the night with no consent. And the two enjoyed it so much that they give over all the corn the Miller has been stealing. And it almost feels like at the part where he was talking about the banging because obviously he was trying to almost make a case of like, okay, th this guy is being banned and he's being punished. It almost feels like he was improvising on the spot and he kind of realized, wait a minute, non-consensual rape kind of feels like these two characters that are supposed to be the heroes of the stories are villains. So let's just say they, they, they enjoyed it. So they, they gave him the core and they ran away. And it kind of feels like shoddily made on the spot, you know, and I, and I think that's part of the genius. It's not that the author isn't capable of creating a better, more, uh, more interesting, or more intricate story. It's the fact that it is purposely written in a way where a rambling person who is just angry at another person for a comedic kind of satirical tale is improvising on the spot and talking about things. And I think that's really, really interesting. And just like that, the Canterbury Tales at, at, on the face level is a quite just a ridiculous set of tales that makes absolutely no sense. However, if you link them together and think about the author's intentions on why they make no sense, then you start to realize that the author is kind of a witty satirical genius. And I really, really like that. And it was really, really interesting, the Canterbury Tales. And yeah, the, those are the three connections that I talked about. And yeah, if you want to use that for a book report or something, go ahead. It is quite interesting. And if you look even deeper into it, you will indeed be able to find a lot more points on how these tales are interconnected with each other. And like always, your plot quest or your plot quest or the Canterbury Tales, like I said, requires a lot of deep analysis so to, to really get the value of the books. However, if you are, however, you know, if you're going for leisure, then no. But if you are indeed going for like literally analysis or trying to have some fun with reading and analyzing, then this is a book for you because there's no, this book is like an onion pail when it comes to, comes to um, analysis and symbolism and philosophy. You peel and peel and peel, but there's always another layer. And there's an interesting, there's an intriguing fun to that, I think. And so if you enjoy that kind of thing, go ahead. Have a great day.